with the MLB season starting up here this week, I am going to make a few videos on how to get some StatCast data, um, do some basic manipulations, and then as well, let's get some minor league data because, hey, um, there was a rule that was passed recently that all AAA stadiums have Hawkeye data, meaning you can access uh, similar StatCast data as you would in the pros in AAA. So, I'm going to show you this in two languages. So, the first language would obviously be R, and the second one is in Python, and that was with the help of Emilio Martinez. I'll drop his Twitter and his GitHub below. Great resource for um, Python-related things. So, we're going to do a simple video on how to acquire StatCast data and then write it to a database after each day. So, we're in R right now. Um, there's three main packages that you need to load in, which is Baseball R, DBI, and R SQLite. If you don't have them installed, simply remove these comments for install.packages and run those uh, those code. So, we're going to get started. We're going to simply call this SC for short for StatCast. And within the Baseball R package, there's a function called StatCast Search that allows you to pull the data. Now, since we're doing this after each day, simply put, we don't need to put any arguments because the arguments are already, as you can see right here, start date is system date minus one and date is the system date. So to make this as simple as possible, we're just gonna leave it as is. And then since it's a quote unquote baseball R data frame, we're going to change it to a regular data frame. So we'll say data frame, SC and we'll say strings as factors equals false. So that way we don't have our data types be all factors. Um, so when we're writing this, so let's go ahead and run everything. So baseball RD by RSQLite pulls the data. Um, as you can see, this is spring training data, just for an example. Again, we'll we'll make it easier on us, but that is how you pull StatCast data from the previous day. So, what we're going to do next is this. We're going to create a simple database. So, I'm going to call this, I'm just going to say C-O-N-N. -N. We're going to connect a database. And so, an RSQ or an SQLite database is just a simple local database that you can keep on your computer um, and allows you to query you know, the StatCast data without having to run StatCast search every time or try to go through Baseball Savant. So DB Connect, and we'll simply say SQLite, and make sure you don't, don't forget the parentheses um, after SQLite, and we'll call this StatCastData.SQLite. Or something along those lines. Um, or we'll actually we'll do stackcast 2023.sqlite. So we'll run that connection. And then we'll simply write a table. So db write table, the connection equals connection, the name, we'll say statcast data 2023. Um, and then the value, it's obviously SC, and then this is where the important part comes in. Simply say overwrite equals false because you don't want your database to be overwritten, but you do want it appended and no row names. Uh, so basically what append does is it allows you to um, add on more data as the season goes along rather than deleting data because um, that would take a lot more time. And then we're going to disconnect our database. So db disconnect. Connection equals connection. So run it. Now we're going to take this code from line 13, put it down here. Um, and we're just going to say db get query, our connection equals our connection, and then a simple SQL statement, which is select star from, since we call it StatCast data 2023, that's the table we call it in our database um, that's what we'll reference to and then we'll say just limit 10 and you can see 
it has the stack as data from that day. So now, since we don't want the spring training data, um, we can run another query that says count equals count, connection equals connection, and we'll say delete from statcast data 2023. And now we have no data. And we'll disconnect our database. So simply put, this is an easy way to get StatCast data after each day. So every day you have it run. Now we've switched over to the Python version and I will leave links in the description below. Um, we're using Spider, which has a similar interface to our studio. So that's, that's what I like a lot about it. But I'll leave a link to the description below to Spider as well as a video that helped me set up virtual environments because there's two very different ways you can set up Python. I use virtual environments. I feel like that's the easiest for me to use. Um, and it allows you to install packages rather quickly. So we're going to import some packages. So like this is similar to saying library and R. And if you don't have these packages, simply run like pip install. And we have pandas, um, all the other ones. So we'll just import. So import pandas as pd. Import numpy as np. And we'll say import date time. Import SQLite 3, because we just want the SQLite um, database. And then I'm going to do something a little bit different. And we'll say from baseball scraper import statcast. So Basically, what I'm doing here is um, instead of importing the entire baseball scraper package, um, I'm just going to import the stack cast. So I'll leave comments of how to install these. So pip install pandas. Um, similar to like install that package is in R. Pip install numpy. I'm pretty sure date time is already installed, so you may or may not need this. And if it says when you run it, it might say like requirements already satisfied. So um, it gives you that. So, and again, shout out to Emilio Martinez for having it on his GitHub. I'll leave that linked below too. This will look a little bit different um, just because I just want to make it as simple as possible. Um, feel free to make like any types of manipulations that you want. So we're going to do today's date. So I'm going to say today's date. And we'll say today equals. So where we'll do date time. Um, date and then today because that's what we want. Now we want to, just in case, convert that to a string. So we'll say today string format time. And this is where we'll go year, month, and then day. Because so we want the full year, we want the month, and we want the day to fit the format for the scraper. And then I'll add in Prev day, so that's where we'll say today minus date time time delta day is equal one, and then same thing prev day prev day uh, string format time oh year month and day. All right. And then let's pull our StatCast data. So data, and we'll say StatCast and start DT equals um, 
our today string, and then end day equals our previous day. And that's an easy way to get our stack gas data. And then I'll just show you like the, the columns. So it just matches. So we'll run all this, give a second to run. And then we'll run this value individually. And it gives you the same exact columns you would get in the R scraper. So now we'll connect a database, make it nice and easy for you. So again, CONN, we'll do SQLite3 connect, and then we'll just call this statcast underscore 2023db. As easy as possible, as they say. Um, and then we'll create a table name. So again, we'll just say statcast data 2023. And then we'll say data to underscore SQL. Our table name. Our connection. And then if data exists, we want to append that data and we do not want an index. So no index, so index equals false. And then close our connection. So let's run these. And now it's in there. And to prove that it's in there, let's rerun it again. So I'm gonna copy line 30 bring it down and then Matt create a basically what's called as a cursor which allows you to again write queries um, add data etc so grr, and then we'll say DF Cursor will execute our item. So select star from our table. So statcast underscore data underscore 2023. And we'll just say limit 10. Um, so we'll run that. And so it says cursor object of SQLite 3 module. And we can just do simply print df, since that's what we call it, fetch1 with the parentheses. And we can see that we have data in there. So isn't that so cool? Um, so let, let's delete that data. So again, um, I'll rerun line 36. And then I will copy lines 30 through 36 and make some slight changes. And line 40. So we're going to create our cursor and then basically delete the data frame. Um, make it nice and easy for you so because we don't want spring training data so reconnect it get our cursor execute and then we want to commit that so run that gives us an error um, let me double check on that I'm doing that right. Um, uh, not the cursor, the connection. So we're going to run that. So now we got that commit to the data frame or the database. And we'll close our connection. So now when we rerun it again, we should have no data. But that's a way in both R and Python